61 and 1. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And God, he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and to bring liberty. I'm paraphrasing this now. To set people free. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me, my listeners. God has given me a spirit that's upon me, head to feet. And this spirit is in me every day to go out and rescue the perishing, to set people free, to anoint them, to bring them the good news, to let them know Jesus saves, to set them free in their mind, in the body, in the soul, in the spirit. Father, I come before you this morning. I come before you, dear God, because I realize, God, you have called me. You have set me apart. You, dear Father, lives in me. And your anointing and your presence is so evident. You are running after me every day. And I'm so happy and so glad and the privilege to serve you as a servant. I thank you, dear God, for this opportunity right now on 99.9 .9, on this local station on WOOPFM and the recording. I thank you, God, that I can be used of you because I've realized that, God, you have created me for this season and this purpose and this time. I'm so glad to know I can rescue the perishing. I can care for the dying. I'm so glad to know I have a good understanding mind of your word. I'm so glad to know each and every day, God, you reveal to me. You, dear God, Jesus, give me insight of where you're taking my ministry, where you're taking me, my family. I'm so glad to know I can hear from you clearly through your word. Oh my God, Father, dear Lord, continually using me Father, because I've realized that, God, you've called us, that, God, you've called us, you created us for a purpose. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. I thank you that I can, that, Father, that open my mouth, I can be bold. I can be radical for you. I'm so glad to know you have trained me, that, God, you are the one, that, God, you've put this in me. And you, Father, I know you want me to spill it out. I'm so glad this week that God I was in the Pentecostal, the 16th annual Azusa Street Lecture. And I received that God another transformation. I'm so glad to know that, Father, these those two days and the time I, shared, I, I was able to read and find out some information, I can bring it to my audience and I can bring it to people. So I thank you that God for our community, our spiritual, religious, Pentecostal movement area. That we, that God, in this area, realize how blessed we are. And how, dear God, you, their Father, hallelujah, has allowed so many to come into this community, dear Lord, to spread the gospel. So help us to go back on our internet, our phone, to spread the word. And to, 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 to go into all the world and preach the gospel wherever we can, dear God. And to do what you call us to do. And that's, Lord, to bring good news to those who are, who are locked up. Those who are locked up mentally, emotionally, psychologically, physically, in whatever area. Hallelujah. I come in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I come in your name. The power in your name that God today. Use me, Lord. But what I know, God, there's someone who's going to hear this later. They're going to need to know you as their personal Savior. And that's the key. I'm asking you, their God, to direct them in the name of Jesus. Come to repent. And ask you to come into the heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Welcome again, everybody. I want you to know it's a joy and a privilege to come before you. Because I'm coming under the authority and under the power of the Holy Ghost. I don't come off myself. I don't come off no one but the Jesus. And like I said in my prayer, I was able to attend the Azusa Street Revival and Williams and um, Seymour Pentecostal had a vision and all the things. Of, and I'm going to try to relate to some of it. I was up to three o'clock studying some of the book. I got one. Um, like, you know, last week we had Dr. Um, David Robach. He is the Pentecostal researcher for these um, with the churches of God and other churches. He does things. and But especially with the Azusa Street Revival with William Seymour, he deals with that vision and goal. And he brought in, like, you know, last week we had a little complication with his guest, Dr. Alexander. Dr. Alexandra, I was able to meet her, listen to her message, and I tell you, I got a, you know when someone have a vision, like your vision, similar, so you know you and that person can really, you know what they say, hang out together, 
and, 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 I, and I made her, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay in touch with her because her vision. Anyhow, let me, let me, let me share some stuff. Go to, go to get your Bible. You need your Bible because I'm gonna just jump around. This one of the books, the woman of Azusa Street. She writes. She's a writer. She's an educator. Oh my God, so much about her. Like he said last week, and, and, and we talk about her. She, she went to Howard on, on Columbia. She's very educated. She, she highly educated, as you said, even in the word. She's a minister, a reverend. She's a minister of the Church of God. So her stuff, I'm going to talk about it. Even some of the other ministers' messages or little um, experts from other people said through her messages, especially Dr. Dale um, Coulter. He's the professor of history. Historical Theology and Pentecostal Theological Seminary, okay? You're bearing me. My words tangle sometimes. You know your words will tangle when you got the Holy Ghost and you just want to bring out everything in it. So um, I have in my mind, in my Bible, in my paper. So go to, um, her, her, um, go to Genesis, Genesis um, 25. Go to Genesis 25 because I'm going to... Um, let you all know some things and I'm going to be, I, don't, I have a guest, my daughter coming to read something too. We got to keep this generation going. She's 31. We have to make sure we get them trained and get them in the word. Some things she said, I'm telling you, I already started working on it. Because when you're being an lecturer and when you're being among people with vision, people who have power, who, who, who stay in God's presence and who listen to God and who reveal who is not uh, um, envy or jealous or how strikes against the church or who 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 know to share, you know? Oh my God, I I, I don't want to fuss. Like she said, I don't want to fuss. I just want to be uh, obedient to bring to you what God is saying to the church. Most of to the church, to God's call and elect people. We know people out there who don't know Christ, who are sinners. Okay, go to 25, Genesis 25, 29. It says, now Jacob cooked a stew, and Esau came in the field, and he was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, please feed me with that same stew, for I am weary. Therefore, his name was called Edom. But Jacob said, sell. Listen to this now. You got to get this point in verse 31. Look what it says. Sell me your birthright as, a, as this day. Sell me your birthright as of this day. I'm going to show you some um, analysis and comparison and stuff. We got to get into the word and see how is this relating to us today? What's going on with us and what God is saying? Okay, and, and, and he said, because the Lord your God brought it to me. Okay, Isaac said to Jacob, please come near me that I may feel you, my son, whether you are really my son Esau or not. So Jacob now, 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 listen, now, you, you, hold on, get your Bible, I'm telling you, because God's going to drop some other things from what I study in the Spirit, and that's what he usually does, so get your Bible, so when I start talking about these things, you all need to know where I'm coming from. So Jacob went near to Isaac, his father, and he felt, he felt him, and said, the voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. Now, I switched Bible. Somehow, I, I pick up the wrong Bible. and I, I, so, so I want you to know some things I wrote in my Bible. is not in this Bible because this is, I, I'm reading from the NKJV. This is a woman's study Bible. So I'm just letting you know, in the woman's study Bible, some things are a little different. And the other Bible I studied was the NIV. So uh, I, 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 I caught some vision. I caught some things I want to drop in your spirit from not only from her message, but things God has already spoken to me about this community. Like, you know, this community, you all know about the community. I don't want to go there. You all know a lot about this community and this surrounding area, the sudden, and all about the Pentecostal movement, A.J. Tomlinson, and all the uh, different assembly and the Pentecostal. So so let me finish reading a little bit more of this. In, in verse, um, Esau, so he blessed him. Listen, listen. 23, and he did not recognize him because his hands were hairy like his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. He blessed him. Okay? Then he said, are you really my son Esau? He said, I am. He said, bring it near to me and I will bless you. Okay? He said, I will eat. No, he said, in verse 25, he said, bring it near to me and I will eat of my son's game so that my son may bless you. So he brought it near to him and he ate and he brought him wine and he drank then his father isaac said to him 
come near me and kiss me, my son. And he came near him and kissed him. And he smelled, and he smelled the smell of his clothing and blessed him. Okay? Now, where I'm going with that scripture is the church. I, I was able to read. That's why I tell you all, read. Read, read, read. Get books and read and find out information. So when you bring your resource, you come together. So you got facts to back you up. I was reading and listening, and I went to the lecture, and I got a lot. Like I said, jump around with me. The book of Azusa Street. This is the book of Azusa Street. Woman. Now, she has the four books, because she is the Dr. Alexandria. She is the... The, the president of the association. And I've been, I've been doing a lot of stuff on the Pentecostal, like you all know before. But when you get some tangible resource, like in the book, and that's what got me hyper. That's what had me hyper. Okay? She, 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 she has a, a, a college. She has, William Seymour was so deep. Oh, my God, the Holy Spirit. But what my point, because I don't have a whole, what I'm saying is, some things what I found out was hidden because someone gave up their birthright. Birthrights were given up. And I'm going to show you how. We don't sell our birthright to church. Come on. You don't, you don't, you don't go selling your birthright for no bowl of soup and foolishness and just because of injustice and what people think of you. We talking about God's. He gave us, God left us the key of the church. He left us in charge. And if you know who you are, if you know your purpose, you call and you need to repent. Go to 2 Chronicles 3, 7 and 14. That's another thing. We need, I'm, I'm jumping ahead. But God began to speak to me clearly. He confirmed some stuff this week in the service Tuesday night at the North Cleveland Church. And Wednesday in the theological Pentecostal the college, the seminary I went to. I was back there to see the beautiful, there was not a beautiful um, chapel. I was able to um, um, be in there again. And, 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 and sat in the seat at, and they, they changed the chapel but anyway it was a blessing just to be there to hear Dr. Alexander preach a message that God had already shown me some things that has been going on and what had happened but now with the book I find out woman, 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 woman especially the black woman back in the early 1900 was highly involved in bringing forth the gospel and getting um, and William Seymour up there in um, 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 California. A lot of this was hidden because the Lord showed me. And you all know I'm not afraid to talk these things because Dr. Dr. Robot was here many times, a couple of times before, and talk about how there are many things. And God began to speak to us. Don't worry, the last should be first and the first should be last. It's coming out. Man don't want it to come up, but it's coming out. God said, I'm going to do a new thing. And while I'm going to drop this in, this is the year of the black woman. If you all don't know that. Woman period. Like I said, Isaiah 4 and, 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 and Isaiah 61 and 1. And Luke 4 and 18. That lives with me. God has anointed me. And you know why I'm preaching it? Because the Bible says we all come by the words of our mouth. And our testimony will I testify. And let the enemy know. No weapon form against me going to prosper. And those that rise against me, not to see, because when God is waking through you, it's the Holy Ghost. Don't come against you. Your hands are too short. I told you the box with God. Don't, don't not, don't not, like the Bible said, touch not God's anointing or do his prophet any harm. I'm dropping that in. That was not my mother. Let's let you know anybody who is carrying God's good news. I ain't talking about false prophet and people are there talking foolishness and doing that. Be careful. You are you are looking for life or death. That's the word of God to you. Okay. I'm, I'm saying this because, listen, as I begin to listen and God begin to reveal and God begin to show me, he said, I told you this, I see this. And he said, a woman she had to come. She lives in, in, in um Washington. He said, the right season, the right time. And she began to, to, to spell out. And she went and she said, the birthright, you know, it's valuable. Your birthright is valuable. Now, I ain't going into the analogy of a mother and a father because we see it here in, 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 um, in, in, in here with Esau. Like, you know, an eldest child in a family who has the birthright for certain things. Look in here and you saw what 
People will trick you. Look in the Bible. Now, but I'm talking about the church now. Look in the Bible. I'm talking about the church. She said, leave something of value. Pentecostal movements, okay, is a birthright. Down there when it happened. These women, and let me name some of the women. These women, okay, who was involved in it. Emma Cotton, Desi Bachman, Lucy Farrow, Lillian Kerr, Gar, Mabel Smith Hall, Julia Hudson. She was one of the mean ones. Lucy Letterman, Jenny Evans Moore, Daisy Bach. I'm telling you, there's a whole bunch of them. And here, she wrote a book about it. I ain't finished reading it. She wrote a whole book about it called The Woman of Azusa Street. And how William Seymour, he was in Houston, Texas. With a little, um, 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 from what I can remember reading, with a little church down there, he was affiliated. But the woman who led him, let me open my book a little bit. I said again, this month, this year is the other woman. So y'all, y'all have to understand. The Zusa Street Revival began in 1906 in Los Angeles, California, under the leadership of William J. He was William Joseph Seymour. Now I'm talking to the church people. Y'all who are church people, listen. Okay? But what happened was he was at his place in Houston. But to get down there, he had to go through a whole lot. A lot of people helped him. Okay? This woman, her name was, she was one of the main ones who first led him to really see that God was upon her life to lead him, okay? Like I called some of the women before, Julia Hutchinson, a woman was clearly Neely Terry, that's the name I'm trying to get, Neely Terry, okay? She wasn't, she, she was, when he came down to, she was a resident of, 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 who belonged to a small holiness church. And this woman allowed him, when he left Texas, to get down there. He didn't even have money to get to Los Angeles. But because someone heard him preach, a woman heard him preach, told another woman, and they said, bring him down here. I'm paraphrasing this now. I, I, I'm summarizing some of this. I'm just trying to show you the significant part woman played in the Azusa Street revival. We hear a lot about William Seymour and some of the other people, but they try to hit the woman. And honey, it's going to be revealed. Because it's all in a book. And resource. Okay? But what, what I'm getting to is, like she said in the message, someone offer us something else. Because when William Seymour them started the revival, and the revival had started and bloomed, there was no injustice. The white was laying hand on the black, the black laying hand, the Hispanic, the, 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 everybody was together, united. Even through all of what was going on back then in 1909, we know racism was exist. But when it came to the Holy Ghost came upon them and they began to speak with tongues and the power was moving, the people did not care about it, just they came together. Acts 2 and 4, and they, they was able to discern that it was the Pentecostal movement. They discerned that Acts 2 and 4 was being fulfilled. Yes, there were some people who was against it. And everybody never agree on everything they hear in the Bible, even some Christians today. But William Seymour saw it, and some of the other followers saw it. And what they did, they pursued it, even although there was some split and people moving on. But I'm telling you, this Bible going to be fulfilled. This Bible going to be fulfilled. Because this was written by the Holy Ghost. Holy men inspired by the Holy Ghost. God spoke. This is the word of God. God breathed his breed. This is God breathing through. And Acts 2 and 4, on the day of Pentecost, they were in one accord with one mind, one spirit. They began to speak. They spoke in other tongues. As the spirit gave them utterance, the birthplace of the church. The birthplace started right in Acts 2 and 4. But then Azusa Street was another birthplace. And in Esau's story, like you see, okay, when you look at the analogy, the whole thing about it is the people, the voice, they heard the voice of God. The voice is Jacob's voice, he said, but the people hold, heard, heard the voice of the Holy Spirit. So you look at the comparison analysis. Then these people back then, like it said in the book, they were not afraid to lay hands on each other. 
No matter if they, which country, because people came from all over the world to Azusa Street. For three years, this revival lasts for three years. You think about it. People came from everywhere, all over the world. The revival spread to Africa. People came in everywhere, took the gospel. Azusa Street started the revival for the world. People came from all over. You name the state. It's in the book. And I can't go completely into all the books. But let me give you some of the stuff she said. We sold, we, she said we give up and we sold our birthright. Because when the Azusa Street started, you listen to the media. They said the media was criticizing and saying these people are crazy and all kind of stuff. And today, we have to list today. What are we doing today? Uh, what are we doing to preserve? Okay? I'm getting ahead of myself, but what I learned in this is that we need to understand that. Okay? Those words what were spoken by the prophet Joel. She said, pour out the spirit on all. We need to look for everybody. Everybody. Okay? Every class. No matter what culture. Okay? And she said that in here, Seymour said that God's speaking time back then was really love. That's what it was. He was bringing love and unity. That's what we need, love and unity in the churches, in the people of God. If we can deal with that, no matter if you have indifference with whatever culture, whatever people, that should not stop us from helping them get to know Jesus. And that's going to take love. And God so he loved this world. He is willing that none should perish, and we should think the same way, that all should come to repent, no matter what they smell like, what they look like, what they sound like. If you're a true child of God, that's why God is moving some people. He's shifting some people. It's sad to say he's taking some to their grave earlier, moving them other way. God is speaking. You got to listen. God is not playing coming this new year. God show me. He said there going to be some big, especially in Cleveland, Tennessee, there going to be some big shifting. Because God is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. The rapture is soon to come. And you cannot be playing with the souls of man. We need to understand. If you're called by God, be genuine, be real. And do not, do not allow God's people who he put in these communities or who he's sending your way and allow what you are saying with your false prophet and what you're doing to discourage them. We is causing people now to even want to come to church. People standing at home. Because of what's going on in some of our churches, we need to stop it. We need to stop it. This is the God spoken. He said, speaking in the love. Um, you know, bring down. He said, pour out his spirit. He want to make a change. That's what, that's what, um, 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 um. This man, William Seymour, bless his heart. He was committed. He was a God sent man. Just like how we had um, um, back in the civil rights movement, we had um, uh, uh, with the man Martin Luther King. God set people aside, and I know he's called me from the Bahamas, brought me here to do the work, and nothing, nobody can stop me because it's no longer I that live it, but it's Christ. And other people who he has called, if he's calling you, you better put your thinking cap on, and you got to get rid of some people who are trying to, people will intimidate you, you know, and they will mess you up. They'll mess up your mind. You can't have lunch with everybody. You can't hang up with everybody. Because they can't go where God's taking you. God is doing a great thing in your life. You better hold on to your sanity. Because we have demonic spirits running around in this community. And I rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Stop running around here because I know who you are. I'll cast you out. The Bible says he's given us power to toy to cast out demons. And that's what you can't, you can't entertain them. You're spending too much time on some people. If they don't want you, better get out the way. Okay, I'm just telling you, breaking in tune of love, he said, the son, he was a son of slave. This man come all the way. He had, had with eighth grade education. So that's who God used him. My pastor preached on that last week. Oh, he was in the illiterate people, people who, he, yes, we need our, because I went to seminary. I have my degree in it, but he, he used in our local people. People who, who, some of them even went to college. They may just have a high school diploma. He's training them because they spend time in the world. They spend time with God. And God is using these kind of people. What are you saying to you? What he's saying to you, he's giving some of us a second chance, he said. He's giving you a second chance to repent. That's, what the, that's the whole thing about it. You know who you hurt. You walk past them every day. And you wouldn't say, you know, I'm sorry. They are already forgiven you. And sometimes we forgive people. But you know what? We just want to clear our mind because we know we ain't doing nothing. I'm forgiving you. you. You're the one who hurt me. You're the one who showed wrong. But then you, the Bible said, falls against your brother. You go first to him. And get it clear. I'm telling you, this climate, and, and she said something about, um, and Clement, uh, and the church of God, um, and Christ Spreaker, he said, this a pastor, his, he said, 
um, 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 visual holiness and unity. That's what we need. We need to have this visual holiness. Okay? Vis we need, we need to, to, to see holiness and unity. And, 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 and we need biblical justice. Biblical justice. Okay? God was trying to bring us back to Acts 2 and 4, they said. God's trying to bring us back. And Gregory McKinney, he said, um, I need some more quotes in her message. I jot down some stuff. You know, he, he said that um, common life of the Holy Ghost. And, and what he's saying is Zeus Street Revival, okay? And what happened then, okay? It was a inter... It was a, it was a time for all generation, okay, to come together for everybody, common life, because of the Holy Spirit and sanctification. That was a time for us to see. God is doing a thing. It ain't have nothing to do with injustice. No matter what was going on back then, because we know it was them, okay? And the people were there for three years, 24 sevens. You can imagine. So people was coming in, flying all over the world, coming in, getting and going back and spreading the gospel. So this William Seymour and this all those work was a lot of people working with him. Mostly, like I said, a lot of women had a lot. They were cooking the food. They were out there making sure the ministers was being fed. I mean, it's in the book. This is in the book. You need to get the book. Okay, prayer and, and stuff and, and, and the gender classes and all this discrimination and stuff. They didn't see none of that. Yes, there may be in a small portion because you always can have that even today. It's never going to 100% go away. But we who are called by God and know the church, like she said, you see injustice, you see something, you say something. Don't allow it. You see something. Come on, these are the days now. You see something going on, even in, especially in the church. What the Lord has shown me, a lot of things could have been done corrected, but we allow it and we don't speak up. Okay, God is raising up a new generation. And my daughter coming in a minute to say, because God is raising up a new generation, a young people. Some of us have allowed ourselves to saturate in this, in this, this unfairness in God's house. That's why God said he shut the door everywhere. This happened everywhere. Not just that. He shut the door and some doors will not open again. And you're wondering why this church open God said, I'm going to keep it closed. Because the fact is he have to start all over. We have to understand we are talking about God now. We ain't talking about man. And we ain't talking about just no church of God or no church of God in Christ or Baptist church. Because some of these members who came along with, they were in a Baptist church. They were in, some of them who came along when they got sanctified, saved, and full of Holy Ghost, they couldn't stay in the Baptist church without fabulous and that tongue speaking. They, 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 they had to leave. And sometimes you have to leave. Come on now, we, we're talking about God. Jesus coming soon, like I said, and we have to understand. If you really grasp the full call of God in your life, there's no time to be playing around. This is no time to be, because God's going to move you all the way. If you're going to compromise with God's word, God done said if you're compromising, you might as well go in another profession. I'm telling you, God's speaking. He said that, um, Jamie, come, my daughter's coming to talk to us. I want to give her a chance because she's the, what, C generation? No, you the, whatever generation. We have to learn to train our young generation. We have to train them and let them get their point of view on what God is saying to them for the church. You know, we need to pray and ask God, like Simon said, you know, we need to get rid of all of the, no, this one is on, excuse me, the, the movement. And and, 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 and and get back our boy right. We need to claim it back. Ask God, bring my boy right back. Who stole it? Where it's been stolen? Whatever we need to revive it, redeem it, and go and get it. And God is calling us to do that. Get it back. No time to play. You know, this wasn't they didn't have no sec back then they didn't have no second class citizen. Everybody was on one accord and one mind. Okay, one body, one spirit. Okay, there was. Let's get rid of the vision. Let's get rid of things what hindering us. Okay, they say they had over two hundred. Like she said, she said it's about two hundred Pentecostal movement. I ain't talking about churches. The movement in United States. Let's talk about the United States now. And we are the Pentecost. We are the God. We are the one who believe in the in, in Acts two and four. And we have so much. We need to be the church. Okay, we need to be what causes. Okay, my daughter. I'm I'm gonna just pause in this message. I'm gonna pause. Um, 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 for a while in this message, and I'm coming back because I want to give her a chance. That's what we have, to, we have to learn to pause a little bit and hear what they're saying and what they're doing because we have to train them. If we want them to be Pentecostal in the church, give them the opportunity to present themselves and to say what they have to say. And I could be bringing more young people on this stage to talk what God is saying. Happy Saturday, everybody. So while in this season of Thanksgiving, I want to highlight King David in the Bible. 
and how he kept a spirit of gratitude and praise. Yes. David played the harp in giving praise to God as he sang psalms. Amen. Psalm 33 says, Let the godly sing for the joy to the Lord. Amen. Let the godly sing for joy to the Lord. It is fitting for the pure to praise him. Praise the Lord with melodies on the lyre Amen. or the harp. Jesus. Make music for him on the ten-stringed harp. Sing a new song of praise to him. Yes, Lord. Play skillfully on the harp and sing with joy. For the word of the Lord holds true, and we could trust everything he does. Amen. Sure do. He loves whatever is just and good. The unfailing love of the Lord fills the earth. Just it. And also, King David, he reminds us in the Psalms to use thanksgiving as a weapon yes. against worry. All right. And in Psalm 105, David reminds us to look back and thank God. Thank him. Amen. Yes. When he thank wrote, oh, give thanks to the Lord. So Call upon his name. Amen. Make Amen. known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Oh, Lord Jesus. Tell of all his wondrous works. Remember the wondrous works that he has done mm -hmm. and the judgments he uttered. And in Psalm 119, David is speaking on God's power. Yes. In Psalm 119 and 164, he says, I will praise you seven times a day because all, right. Amen. all your regulations are just. Yes. Amen. Praise him. And David thanks God for his goodness. Mm hmm even in the midst of his trials. David recounted the times that God has come and strengthened and sustained him. Yes. And one demonstration is in Psalm 63. And in Psalm 63, David was in the wilderness of Judah. Mm -hmm. And he says, Oh God, you are my God. Yes. I earnestly search for you. Yes. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land yes, Lord. where there is no water. I have seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon your power and glory. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. I will praise you as long as I live. Lifting Amen. up my hands to you in prayer. You satisfy me more than the richest feasts. I will praise you with songs of joy. Amen. Jesus. I lie awake thinking of you, meditating on you through the night. Mm. Because you are my helper, I sing for joy in Amen. the shadow Thank of you, your Jesus. wings. Thank you, Lord. I cling to you. Let's cling your to strong him. right hand holds me securely. Cool. Thank you, Jesus. So this is, again, a demonstration of when David was in the wilderness of Judah yes, and where yes. he cried out to God and even in the midst as I said of his trials yes he was thanking God so it's just reminding us to maintain and sustain even in the hard times yes Hallelujah. a spirit of gratitude oh help us Lord Jesus and David gave thanksgiving to God in mm -hmm. advance mm-hmm in advance for what he's going to do. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And that's demonstrated. One example is in Psalm 52 and 8, mm -hmm. where he says, But I am like an olive tree flourishing in the house of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I trust in God's unfailing love mm -hmm. forever and ever. Oh, thank you, Lord. For what I'm you have done, you. I will always praise you in the presence of your faithful people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I and I will hope in your you, name, Lord. for your name is good. Yes, his name is. And also Psalm 34 thank says, you, Jesus. which many are familiar with, Psalm 34, yes, I will Lord. bless the Lord at all, all times. Lives. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make yes. its boast in the Lord. in the Lord, yes. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Yes, Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Thank you, Lord. And the final example in the book of Psalms, it wraps up with Psalm 150. Yes, Lord. 
And in Psalm 150, it commands every being and everything to praise the Lord. That's right. Which many are familiar with this mm -hmm. passage of scripture as well. Yes. And Psalm yes. 150 says, praise ye the Lord. Praise him. Praise God in his sanctuary. Oh, yes. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him. Let's praise, praise him. Praise saints. him according to his praise excellent him. greatness. Mm. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Yes, Lord. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Yeah, everything. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Oh, praise him. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Yes. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Yes, Lord. Praise, praise him. him upon the high, high sounding, sounding cymbals. cymbals. Let everything that has everything. breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. And let's remember the five P's. Let's remember and thank God for the five P's, which are his presence, mm -hmm. his provision, mm -hmm. his power, his protection, yes. and his peace. Amen. Amen. So the five P's, his, again, his presence, his provision, his power, mm -hmm. his protection, and his peace. Amen. 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 May you Amen. be reminded, uh -huh. <laughs> may you be reminded again of King David, these examples that came from the book of Psalm on how he kept the spirit of gratitude and praise, and especially in this spirit, in this time, this yes. season of thanksgiving. Yes. To continually. Yes, because we realize so many people are going in. Yeah, you need to keep the spirit. Thanksgiving, you know, it's hard for a lot of, especially people with loved ones going on. You know, this is a hard time during the season with your loved one going on. But, you know, I'm going to pray right now and ask God. Um, 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 Jimmy, you want to say a little prayer? Oh, I'll, uh, yeah, what I, what I want to do is bring someone to Jesus. That's what I want to do right now. I, Cause she has another engagement. I, I want I want to bring someone to Jesus because you you going down you you downhearted. So if you don't know Jesus as your personal savior, this is what I need for you to do A B C. Okay, let's recognize, accept, let's let's acknowledge He's God. Okay, let's acknowledge that we we still have a God. There is a God. Okay, then you believe He is God. Cause some people they'll acknowledge, but do you believe He's God? He is God. I'm telling you, the Bible said. Okay. In the beginning, God, okay? He was in the beginning, okay? And then you got to confess. If you don't know Jesus, your person, so you got to confess your sins. You have to say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Say, I want that God, a new life. I want to be different. I want, when he said different, I want, I want to live right. I want to follow your word. I want to follow the Ten Commandments. I want to do right. So if you repeat after me, say, Jesus, I'm going to give you a chance now. Say, Jesus, I know you died at the cross. And I know that, God, you stayed in the grave for three days. But, Lord, the best part about it is you died, yes, but the best part is you rose again. That's what the one person, like they say, if he hadn't rose again, what was the sense of living? But he rose again. He sure did. Say, I know you rose again, and you're coming back again. When you rose again, he stayed, and he went back to heaven. Okay? Listen, now you got to hear the story, and you got to know. He's coming back again, and you're coming back with those that know you as their personal Savior. So, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins, Jesus, because I want to see you, because you are altogether lovely. You're going to allow us to live to heaven forever, and we'll have a great life. And you said that heaven, you'll live eternity forever and ever. You know, things of that nature. And when you repeat that, you need to... Allow someone to tell your testimony to help you. Allow, read your Bible, call your pastor or call a church, call someone who can help you to go to grow in Christ. Okay, and that's the main part of this hour is to bring you to Jesus, to let you know Jesus loves you and He care about you. And I pray God blessing upon you. I thank you, Lord, for those who just repeated that prayer. I ask you to guide them, Lord. Let them, their Father. And even those who will see the, the recording later, that they will understand the full knowledge of you, their God. And that they will open their mouth and repeat and say, Jesus, forgive me my sins and heal me. In Jesus' name I pray. Very simple. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, 
I got about 20 more, 15 more minutes. That's that's what I'm saying. Sometimes the service is going to go like that. It's going to go where? You see that in churches sometimes. The preacher will have to stop. Let the Holy Ghost take over. Just, well, this has to be all the time. You have to let God have his way. And like many of y'all know, this, 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 this studio is saturated. We have gospel music all day Sunday in here. We have gospel, a preacher coming on Sunday morning. We prayed in here. We in the stay. I've been in here. I prayed. You know, we have a lot of prayer going on this day. So this station is anointed by God. So I, I, I don't want you to forget where I'm at now. Like I said um, in my book, and I was talking to you all. Y'all know I'm excited about this book. And I think I'm going to do more when I get all the names together. I've been reading. And, and, and like I said, these women had um, a, a lot of impact on getting the Zusa Street revival going. And, and, and they, they're recognized in a book. So Alexandria, okay? Extra Elder Alexandria. And, and, and just Google up the woman of Azusa Street and get this book so you can study more. You who are listening, I'm here this lady. You need to understand what happened. And it's more book on Azusa Street. But this is a significant one. So we could understand why some of the things we didn't hear about. Because women, women, and like I said, these black women, they, 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 they push him. They encourage him. And you all know that's like many times in, in family. You know, I help my husband. Hey, you honey, you got to do this. Push up. You got to get these men to understand the significant thing. And they told him he had no money. They have raised the money. They, they could wreck him to the people. We can get the money. Had him stay in a house, find a house for him to stay, find a couple. I'm telling you, it's interesting, very interesting. We women encourage, encourage your husband, encourage your, your family member, encourage your, your, your significant. I'm just saying, you have to do it sometime because sometimes it's just that God call us. We've always been, I mean, go back to the Bible, go from Mary. Go, I mean, come on, from the Bible. This ain't nothing new. We always look at the cross. Who was there at the cross first? When Jesus rose. Who was there? Mary and those other women. So don't, don't, don't get me started on the woman thing now. And you will go to Esther, Ruth, and all these different stories with women. Very significant. Okay, let me pick up a little bit more on her message. And, and as she said, and again, we talking about Dr. Um, Alexandria. She from Maryland. And like you all know, she was here for the Zusa Street. For you who just joining, the 16th annual. And this is big here in Cleveland. They have it every year. It's the 16th. Okay, annual Azusa Street Lecture. And you saying why they have it in here in Cleveland, that's another topic, a story, why it's here. Okay, go back to the, you have to do some history on that. But she was, she got an award, that's nothing. She got the Spirit of Azusa Street Award, honoring her. They honored her. She's president, you know, she's president of, of his foundation, of the Joseph uh, um, Seymour Foundation. That's how um, um, strong she, how powerful she is. She's a very powerful woman. She, she, she She's a professor. And, and she, she holds um, uh, many degrees and, and accolades with uh, theological um, things. And she studied and she helped a lot of people. She's involved in a lot. Google up her name. I'm very inspired by her. And I definitely will be in touch with her more. Because I want to grow. I want to do what God called me. And I need more mentor. You all hear me talk about some of my but But, but she's going to be one too. Because I want to do what God called me to do. And sometimes I need more resource. I need facts. So when I come on here, you all do, you'll know what I'm speaking. Okay? So I can be. And she talk about how the Lord sanctified. She, she from a nine-year-old, God called her. You got to get a book on her story. Like I said, she had about five or six books. Uh, and God called her from nine-year-old. She heard the voice of God saying, Opie Dyer, Opie Dyer. Okay? And, and it's a whole pass on, on that. And, you know, she said, we pass people every day in, in, in the hall. We see people on the street. And, 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 and sometimes we need to just... You know, ask them how they doing. To be a Christian, we God probably need to help people as we see them. You know, she said McKinney. McKinney said this. Oh, I said that yet. Let me see McKinney. I think I already said that. Okay, no, let me see. This is another preacher. McKinney said God did something powerful at the Zusa Street revival. Okay, back then in 1909, he said when all these um um um, um different class and group of people and all the racism and the sexism and all the class of people in the midst of that the 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 the, the different culture especially like they said the asian and hispanic and all those people who's down in the culture they were able to interact with each other they were not afraid to touch each other and, and, and allow their holy spirit to go upon them to anoint them and, and and let them be filled with the holy spirit and that's going back to the touch go back what i'm telling you in, in, in Genesis, go back to Genesis now 25 and, 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 and um, what you call it? Are we touching people or are we touching the wrong people? 
you know, with, with, with this in the story with, with Esau on Jacob and Esau, his dad, now the Spirit of the Lord has to show me this right now because I, I, I got it another way. The Spirit of the Lord, his dad gave the, the, the boy place to the wrong person. He didn't supposed to get, he was not the eldest son. He fooled us out. He did the church. We, we, we being fooled. Lots of we being fooled. We being tricked. Our birthright was stolen. Those people back then was touching each other. The book, the book in the book. They were not afraid to lay on on a drunk man, a sick man, a black man, a Asian man, African, Asian. Their people flew in for this revival. They laid hand on them. They talked with them. They ate lunch with them. They sat together. They seek each other. If you get the Holy Ghost, do you want other people to get it too? And that's what they did. They knew they had it. So they were able to help others got it. And they laid hand and tarry with them. That's what the book said. They tarry with them. They stayed up all night. Three years, people were there tarrying. They wanted this one so they can go back to Africa. They went all over the United States, Europe, France. You name it, it's in the book. I read some of it. And I'm trying to tell you all today, we got to make sure when we see people, if they need prayer, lay hand on them. Don't be afraid to touch them. People know when you love them, you know. They know when you care about them. Sometimes we just give them $5 or $10 or we throw some food at them. We do. People want to know you loving them. You Christian, I'm telling you, God saying you they need to know you love. They need to hear your love. And they need you to not say, oh, I'm praying for you. No, pray for them right there, boy. My, pray for them right on the street. I do it many times. Stop, get out your car. Lay hand on them. Get your prayer on your prayer floor. And anoint them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God said we need to understand this calling he's given you. Now, if you're not called, I understand. But if you got the anointing, you call, you need to do it right then. That's what they did at Azusa Street. And, and, and going back to in Genesis, what happened is uh, um, the church, what we did with it, we allowed the media because they were making for us. They said the the, 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 the the television people and all these other people. And what, what they said, people just went their own way. They're afraid, afraid of what people saying. Afraid because someone called them saying, teasing them or, or saying, oh, y'all holy rollers or something like that. And that's what God was showing me. Many of you are afraid to be called holy roll. You're afraid to be Pentecost. You're afraid to shout. You're afraid to open your face, say hallelujah, and praise the Lord. That's the Spirit of the Lord saying, you're not Pentecostal if you're afraid to open your mouth and say praise the Lord and wave your hand in church. That ain't, I'm telling you, God is speaking. He's doing a new thing. He's doing a new thing, and we have to understand, you know, we must revisit, she said, what God had called us to do. Revisit it and try and revive it. And try and, and rekindle it. Whatever we need to do, we need to get the Holy Spirit back in the church and get ourselves back together. Okay? And she talked about A.J. Tomlinson, the first general overseer, and how he tried to bring the people, the classes, and the people together. He started, I, that's another topic with him preaching on him, because I read his book and I know. He tried to do things. And some of the people don't like what you do. They push you out of the way. They don't happen all the time. Anytime God give you a vision, that's why sometimes God said, you know, he told me, I give you the station. I give you this hour and you're responsible. I call you to pass to the station. I say, you be careful because people will come in and try to steal what God gave it and put in this community. And I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. God bless Mr. Jones and his sons and his family to see the vision that allowed me to be on here. And Fro Daddy, you saw him was just in here and mine door. Anytime I could come in here and all of Mr. Goins and Mr. Edward and all of them who work along. They understand this community. They grew here and they know this is the holy nation. And God's going to send people here. And more people will get more hours to preach the gospel and let you know don't mess around in Cleveland, Tennessee. This is the Pentecostal movement and we're going to keep it like that and God the revival. I got to go and I got, let me finish this up because oh Lord I got so much more. I have to finish this some other time. She mentioned how he did and what he did and he need to, to name um holiness. Holiness. That's what she keeps saying and she keep she went into Isaiah 61 how the spirit of the Lord. That's what I'm telling you. How we ought to redeem people and, and, and we as Pentecostal need to I don't understand my own handwriting sometimes. And, and and what are we are doing? What are we doing? What are we saying? And she talked about Obadiah. Go back in Obadiah. And she's talking about what Obadiah. Look in the book of Obadiah. I didn't have time to study, but look and see what it says in Obadiah. She talked about the, how those people back then, okay? What she called them, the Edomites, how they stop. I ain't studied that part because I, she, but what she said, the children of Israel, they're the one who stopped them from so joining. They, they, they stopped them from going. Took the people 40 years. In the wilderness. 
but they could have gone through in what, four or five days. But these people stop them. You need to read that. I don't have a whole lot of research till I read, but that's what she said in the Bible. Go read Opie died. Because she said, that's what the Lord gave her from a child. Opie died. The Lord hands was upon her. Opie died. And someone confirmed it. And how that scripture was all tangled up in her message. If the, 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 the Edomites, they did not let them pass through. Okay? And that's what some of us do today. We, we, God is sending people to us. God is sending people with your blessing, with your anointing. But you, because the person don't look like you, don't sound like you, you miss your blessing. Many churches miss their blessing because God allow people to come to this community and your community, wherever you are, you need to stop it. You need to stop. You are messing with the hands of God. God gonna do, but you, you can't mess it up, but I'm saying you messing up your own blessing. That's what put it that way. Because God gonna move you out the way. Okay. True. What could, what, what could have been done in four days? Uh, what, you know, it took that long. Okay. We as the body of Christ, you said as, 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 as we need to. Okay. The Edomites. Okay. If you stand and st stop, stand by and stop the people from whatever God is trying to do. She says, stop it. Stop it. Okay? Because these people stop. The Israelites, the, the, the Edomites, they stop. We don't, we need to let that be the last time. And the last time you need to revive. A hundred years has gone from Azusa Street time. We need to stand up and do the right thing and redeem that time. We stop many things. I, I don't want to keep going there. We cannot go on and see, okay? Like she said, injustice and don't say nothing. I talked about that before. And build bridges. She's a build bridge and that's what I am. Speaking for the voices of those, like she said, who can't speak for them. So that's what God told me from day one. Our black community, I'm letting you, y'all better wake up. Because God doesn't tell me. I'm coming in some of your areas. God doesn't say. He's sending people. You need to wake up. Know the community. Many of y'all move here. In this area, don't know what you're moving to. You need to wake up. This is Cleveland, Tennessee. This is the city of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Anointing, the city with spirit. This is God's holy nation. Know about it. This is where the Holy Pentecost, Pentecostal movement all over in these mountains. The spirit of the Lord is upon these people in these mountains, these homes. People pray in these homes you're living in. These apartments on your property. Holy Ghost power breakers. So know where you are. Know where you are. Okay? We need to show love. We need to show um, um, compassion. You know, go back and reclaim, go back and revive, go back to what we need to do. She said, she said that this is a movement. We need, we need to understand God's work is a, is a, is a Pentecost is a movement and movement. It take a lot of people working together. Okay. We have opportunity to make a change. Okay. And she talked about even how, um, 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 the church of God, um, 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 overseer said, you know, racism is a sin. It's a sin. And we all know that it's a sin. So let us do something about it. Okay, let's let's wake on it. It could take some of us a little while. We need to get it out your system, whatever, rebuke it, cancel it, or let some of them and rebuke it. I'm telling you, God is calling us to get into 2 Chronicles 7 14. My people which are called by my name. And I saw that many, many times. And I every time God showed me the significance, why that is keep coming up every time. It's because most of it is dealing with past life of people. You say you're not sinning now, but what have you done? You need to forgive. Who have you hurt? Who, what did you do? Go back. The person don't wait till they die on the, when you're dying bed. People waiting in the dying bed. They say they can do this and do that and do the next. You need to do it now. You know, don't wait until then. The person living, waking with you right around you. Forgive them. Don't hold it. Don't hold it. You know, God wants, forgiveness is powerful. Because once you don't forget that person, you're free. You feel good. You can do whatever you want to do. And don't feel guilty. Okay. We, we really need to change. Look at, 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 at these things. And, and our people are, 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 are need to change in any way besides themselves. And she said, Dr. Coulter, 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 he's on here. He's the man who, see where he at? Dr. Coulter is on here. Samia, he was one the one who, um, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's in Chattanooga. He's one of the speakers, was, did something, the Pentecostal historical um, theologian. You know, he said that um, um, Seymour, this was his, um, this is some of his word, and I'm, 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 I'm sort of paraphrasing this because when you're writing things down, he said that 100 years ago, Seymour prophesied, or some that 100 years, or he prophesied this saying that that was 100 years ago, and he was saying now is the time, it's been about 100 years, that what happened at Azusa Street, again, I'm paraphrasing this, and I'm trying to remember what she said, but I understand what she's coming from. Now is the time, it's been 100 years ago, that the revival, what happened in Azusa Street now, now is the time. It's 100 years now. Let's do it, okay? Okay? Seymour was saying something about the next 100 years. Back then, a revival can break out again. That was my understanding. So that's for now, okay? 
but now is the time. Let's do it. Let's get revival going. Let's go start it, okay? These prophecies, because many people prophesy over this community. Many people say the revival can start you. Let's get it going. It's going. It started already in us, in our home. Let's go. It. And Coulter said that prophecy of God, that God is going to pour out his spirit in revival like this. Off of Zeus Street in 100 years. I wrote it down twice. It said that she believed it's now. Yes, that's it. Okay. All right. Now, I'm getting ready to close now because I have to wrap this up. But I got so much still in my mind, still speaking up. The Holy Ghost boldly. She said, be bold. Be, be radical. Okay. Holiness boldness, she said. You know, we need more people like that. We need people to realize that if you know, now if you don't have Christ in you, you're not anointed to do these things. And if you don't have the, 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 the ability and the power and anointing, yeah, keep your mouth closed then. If you, you feel like, you know, do what God call you to do. But you need to be radical. You need holy boldness. You need to stand up, open your mouth, and don't be afraid of the enemy and the devil. God's the type of people God is raising up, okay? He's raising up people who are trailblazers. People who are going to be leaders, anointed leaders, filled with the Holy Ghost, filled with power to teach, to preach. Okay? That's what he's saying. Okay? To be radical and to preach the word. Who are going to preach the word? Not all kind of stuff what they feel like. Preach the word. Okay? That's what he's bracing up now. Because time is too short. Christ is coming soon and people dying. Not just with COVID. People just dropping dead with all kind of stuff. Y'all see it? Every time I go on my internet. People dying, okay? I'm going to close, okay? I'm getting ready to close. Overseer, uh, uh, there was some other choice, some other things um, she said about different um, ones who was involved with that. And I will bring it in my next time whenever I talk about this again because I want to make sure I'm bringing it right, okay? How we ought to do. She said, how I've grown again, you know, by, by evangelism, I will say something, but I see injustice. That's what's just big. You know, we need to understand what is my part to bring to this what, what are we bringing to the table? What are we saying? You know, we need to do our part. God is calling this new generation. Like you saw my daughter, my beautiful daughter, Jamie. She's, she's, she, she knows what God is saying to her. She's been trained. She's been trained in Pentecostal. She knows the word. She knows the word. She's been trained from a birth. Okay? Train your children so they won't lose their birthright. Okay? That's the main part. We need to rec reconciliation. That's another thing. Reconcile. Forgive. Ask God to heal us so we can make a difference. If we want to change it, we'll make a difference. People got to hear, see, and know we are genuine in the word. God bless you and keep you. God face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.